So what you're currently looking at is a ripped open uh, 2N2222 transistor. And um, the device is made, the actual housing is made big so your fingers can handle it and other machines can handle it. But the actual, actual transistor, if I can point at it here, um, is just this little thing at the top of the screen. Um, and I kind of got a little curious to see why is it shaped that way? When we think of um, transistors, right, when I think back to my electronics class, I just think of an N block next to, to a P block next to another N block. And so um, with me, I've actually got um, an expert, Dr. Paul Bergstrom here. Um, and we've got some diagrams, and I'm going to ask some questions, and he's going to kind of explain. So first, Dr. Bergstrom, why, why does it look like this, right? Why does it sure. look like this traditional shape here? Well, the answer is that it does, but this cross-section that we think of NPN is actually looking vertically into the device. And so it's useful to think about these blocks of an N-type emitter, a P-type base, and an N-type collector, uh, that even though we lay those sideways in our typical analysis of these devices, it actually represents a vertical uh, cross-section of the device. So what you're looking at when you see the image on uh, the microscope screen, you're actually seeing the top of the device. So you're actually seeing the top of the emitter and the contacts to the base that are adjacent to the emitter. Um, that's what that represents here. Uh, the de this device, it appears the collector is actually uh, at the back, it's a backside contact to the collector, so the collector is at, at the bottom of that whole stack. So if we think about how this is built, how this is fabricated, we have to recognize it's fabricated in a silicon or other semiconductor substrate. And if we do have a backside collector contact, we probably have a heavily doped region. The substrate is probably a heavily doped region on which uh, the company that fabricated the device grew through epitaxial deposition a single crystal layer of lightly doped n-type material so that they had a layer that was probably mostly n plus so this is not really appropriate thickness but then this layer would be based on the total voltage that that device can hold off and you said that was about uh, but maybe up to 20 volts maybe yeah, at most. Yeah, the small signal transistor. So that's probably, uh, so ultimately this region width would be related to how thick it would need to be so that it could hold off a 20 volt uh, uh, reverse bias on that device. These regions, sh they're shown as being relatively thick, but really they're uh, infinitesimally thin, right? They're probably, this total stack between the emitter and the base probably represents less than two microns and possibly less than a micron of, of total thickness in the overall stack, which is probably on the order of half a millimeter. Yeah. This total thickness is about half a millimeter. So the actual active device, what this area is in this outer square and what is represented in terms of a cross-sectional area of this uh, lateral description of this device is really between these dotted lines. It's just the top looking down into the device is is the cross section looking from the emitter through to the collector. Um, so the emitter is formed last. So the the collectors form first through that that epitaxial layer, and then the base is typically diffused or implanted into it uh, to form this counter doping of p-type material. So that's typically in silicon that would be boron. The n-type material is either arsenic, antimony, or phosphorus. Phosphorus is the most likely. And then the n-plus emitter is usually ex extremely thin. It's very heavily doped. It has to be more heavily doped than the base region because, again, it's counter doping the material. And likely that is, uh, uh, that's probably uh, much less than uh, a half micron thick. It's probably uh, only a, a couple, a uh, couple of hundred nanometers thick. On top of that, the contacts are made to those, and so sometimes there's even heavily heavy doping that's made to the p-type region. And for the collector, the collector contact on the backside is made to this very heavily doped n-plus region. So, you asked about the geometry. Sure. And a big piece of that reasoning relates to 
the resistance, if this is the area over which the device is active, we need to look at this lateral distance from the center point out and recognize that we have a resistor that's formed between the active area of the device and where the contacts are. And so we have this lateral parasitic resistance effectively that's undesirable. And so to minimize that overall distance from the center point to the edge where it's making contact, they will sometimes change the geometry of the device such that number one, they can make a wire bond contact in a large enough area. That's one of the reasons to have a big area here and a big area here. But the other aspect of this is so that from this distance out to the edge or out to the contacts and you know from here out, uh, from here out into, into where the contact to the base is underneath the emitter that to minimize those resistances having a geometry where there's a minimal width or where there's a nominal width uh, that helps to minimize the overall resistance uh, of the base region and that helps make the device work faster. Mm -hmm. So if you have lower parasitic resistances associated with the device that allows you to have a faster acting device. That, that, that uh, transistor can switch faster as a result of having lower resistances. Sure. So, um, so effectively you're saying, right, okay, uh, effectively, you're saying the real transistor is in this range right here, and it's really dictated by the geometry of the emitter. It's totally dictated by the geometry okay. of the emitter. So that center region here, that's the emitter, and that's what defines the area of the transistor. So that's the active area, straight down into the device from there. That's where the active transistor is. Sure. Okay, Let, let's go back to the microscope real quick. Um, so, the, okay, just to review, right, what we're actually looking at on the top, really all that is is the contact, right? That's like the actual metal doped it's the area. Metal contact yeah. making contact with the semiconductor yeah. underneath it, yes. And, and it's likely that the doped region underneath the contact is about the same geometry, right? Yeah, it probably splits the difference between the metal of the emitter and the metal of the collector. Or, me, yeah, metal of the base, excuse me. And, metal of the emitter and base. And there's some um, other things that you could overlook but aren't trivial, like the actual roundness of... Um, sure. Uh, yeah, of the emitter. What's the reasoning behind that? Well, one of the things that happens when you have sharp edges in a contact, especially if this device is going to operate at uh, high frequencies or at high voltages... A sharp edge or a point uh, in a profile represents a high field region, a high electric field region. And so one of the ways to minimize that high electric field or at least define what a maximum field would be would be to form a radius and that radius then would allow for uh, a more uniform uh, electric field in the behavior of this device so that you wouldn't have uh, uh, issues with, uh, with defects that would maybe happen as a result of high fields, where you might have leakage currents that happen at those edges, or where you might have a lower voltage breakdown of those junctions as a result of those very sharp corners. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And so one of the other points you were making is in that top right corner, let's see if I can point to it here, that top right corner right there, um, it probably does have one of those sharp corners, or it, you can actually see it, the, right. barely the pad jumps out a little bit, and that's just to give you a nice surface area for when they bond that contact or that wire onto it. Right, there's a certain amount of current that this device has to carry, and they have to use a certain size of wire bond, of, of wire, when they actually make that, uh, make that connection from the wire out to the lead frame of the device, which is, which is taking those ultra small, I mean, these wires in this drawing are probably, or in this uh, image are probably anywhere from 100 microns, maybe up to 200 microns, but that's the size of a human hair. And so to get that to a scale where it can be manipulated without breaking uh, requires that you make a contact from something that is, you know, tens or hundreds of microns in scale to something that's out on the order of millimeters in scale. Okay. 
And so this is really just a scaling effect, an area that allows for the contact to, to take place, both for the emitter as well as for the collector, or the, the base, and then the whole, whole backside is likely the collector. Sure. And speaking of the collector, right, there's this, uh, there's this kind of like brass slash goldish looking mm -hmm. um, spot in the back. And yeah, so the, the whole enclosure of this metal, right, the whole metal casing of this transistor is the collector. Um, but what do you suppose is happening right there in that kind of gold region? Well, that backside, that, that probably is the lead frame. And so the lead frame has different regions that allow for the connections out to the pins that would be used in the device. And so that is a part of the lead frame that would be connected to the collector. It's okay. probably uh, attached to the collector using a, a, some form of solder paste. Yeah. Um, and there's probably still a metal that's deposited on the, on the actual device. The metal then makes contact to the solder paste, which makes contact to the lead frame. Yeah, so you can see the other two leads, there's that... Um, there's that black around it, which is like some sort of probably glass packing or something. Sure, along those and I'm lines. sure that's exactly what it is. Just just to insulate it as those wires come in, um, in and so it's not you know directly shorting to the um, to the collector. Right. Um, yeah. So I, I, that's just uh, because the because the whole back of the device is representing that collector contact. Uh, that means that's a good contact. That's a very good thing, but then it also has to get out to the pins, and so that uh, that uh, brass-looking bar is likely the lead frame material um, that is actually making part of one of those pins. Sure. Those pins probably are made from that, but same material. Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Bergstrom. You're welcome.